Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Mohammad Tariq Mahmood. I am assistant professor at Federal Ultimate University of Arts and Science and Technology, Islamabad. And the co author with me in this paper is Dr. Sadar Shah, who is also assistant professor at Federal Ultimate University of Arts and Science and Technology, Islamabad. The topic which I am going to present today is that is the non legal monetary policy rules and the opportunistic approach. This is basically the opportunistic approach that is held by the central banks, whether they take the opportunity to respond to the situations where uh, they are somebody, uh, somebody sometimes, uh, sometimes they are flexible in adopting their policy, or sometimes they are non-flexible. So resilience versus non-resilience opportun opportunity that is held by the central banks in conducting their policy. Uh, before going into its uh, details, I would just uh, detail about uh, our uh, research work or the paper we have uh, done. We will just take a little bit uh, background of this uh, whole scenario that how the monetary policy rules are established since Taylor's 1993, Svensson's 1997, McCollum's 1989. So these rules basically uh, target that how the inflation is responded by the central banks and how the central bank uh, basically responds to the deviation of output uh, from its target and the inflation of output from its target. So, uh, and similarly, we also see that the Svensson's forward-looking monetary policy rules is basically an augmented version of the Taylor's rule. Although it is evident that keeping inflation with the band defined by the lower and upper threshold level does not demand a severe policy response, as the, this is uh, cited by some uh, literature early, earlier on. So we can say that, that there is a parallel argument that represents the inflation rates that are below th uh, the lower rate, uh, threshold are basically not responded by the central banks. So but this is a, a situation which we come across for particularly in the developed countries. So in the literature, <clears throat> we find certain uh, problems with the original Taylor rule. Uh, first, the Taylor rules mainly depend on the estimated variables like output gap, uh, real interest rate, et cetera, which are basically not uh, easy to measure. These, uh, these measures are very difficult and uh, they lack uh, sometimes uh, robustness as well. Uh, secondly, the real uh, equilibrium real interest rate tends to change over time. It is difficult to measure uh, its expected value. So since equilibrium real interest rate does not uh, remain same uh, uh, due to the changes in expected inflation, so it is difficult to measure the exact value of the uh, expected inflation for the future. So uh, with this, uh, uh, some uh, criticism on the Taylor and other rules, uh, we have uh, used in this paper uh, a, a particular device or mechanism uh, developed by Taylor, Mark Taylor, and Davra Dockies, who uh, their procedure to model the potential asymmetries in the action of the central bank using three regime threshold uh, regression model. So we would discuss that what is the upper threshold of the inflation, what would be the lower threshold of the inflation, and what is the response of central bank to both these uh, uh, both these uh, thresholds, and what is its response between these thresholds. So we would uh, be using uh, uh, in the uh, for the slides we will, below we would show that the, how these uh, thresholds are modeled and how the non symmetry basically exists. Why we why why we study why why would need to study the non symmetry because to a positive output gap and to a negative output gap the central bank would not respond equally it should not rather it should not wait uh, assign equal weight to inflation and uh, output gap when they are going to have a uh, low output uh, deviation from its uh, potential level and high deviation of inflation from it, its target level. So when the inflation forecast violates the upper threshold, the monetary authority should alter the short or nominal interest rate more forcefully. So if it is uh, uh, more than the upper threshold, 
the monetary authorities are basically aimed to uh, deal it with uh, more uh, uh, more uh, more uh, strongly uh, or rather more uh, strictly though non-linearity uh, in a policy framework once recognized become element of man, uh, man, uh, monetary models uh, investigating the policy issues nevertheless question of ways to model non-linearity remains a big concern so there are certain ways that we can uh, model these non-linearities, that is Mar Markov switching uh, models, threshold regression models, which are known to be the uh, uh, TRMs, and the smooth transition autoregressive uh, models, they are known to be the star models. All the, the three types of Markov, uh, Markov, uh, Markov switching model or the regime shift model or the star models, all three models basically uh, are criticized in one way or the other in the uh, uh, previous literature, but some uh, somehow the model with the star, star models, which were more rigorously studied by Tan and Abibullah and uh, Mishkin, uh, or uh, you can see the Kokerman, uh, etc. So and Rasvirta as well, who was the forefounder of this uh, star models. So, but what model we uh, fit fits with the data of uh, every economy? That remains a big question mark as well. So uh, we will go through a uh, brief uh, literature instead. I would just go uh, skip out of this literature, and we would uh, now concentrate on our model, the model. Uh, so, uh, as I, I can show you uh, further, that we have used four models, and all these four models are named differently and are assumed differently as well. We have uh, used uh, a different set of parameters for every uh, model. So, first model is the uh, regime switching model, and this regime switching model basically allows us that we would switch between the two regimes, upper threshold and the lower threshold, and uh, keeping ourselves uh, bet in between. Uh, so all the three regimes in between upper and lower, more than upper and less than lower. So all the three regimes are studied in this model. So I would just uh, uh, now put for some uh, uh, light on this, uh, this first model and we would have this that this model is Uh, this model is the monetary policy response function interest, uh, through interested uh, uh, instrument. And uh, epsilon t is the white noise error. We have written it a, uh, uh, differ, uh, differently or the outside the uh, this, uh, these braces uh, because we need to know that this is same. This would remain same for the every, uh, every model uh, out of these three options which we have uh, uh, left with. Uh, so, uh, uh, first of all, the first model we we have that if the expected inflation we have uh, uh, calculated expected inflation uh, using the monthly data by expecting it uh, 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 expecting it for the further uh, twelve t plus uh, eleven uh, periods and if the expected inflation is above the upper threshold model t uh, if if it in the superscript then it is upper script, and if it is the subscript, then it is the uh, lower threshold. So if inflation, expected inflation remains above the upper threshold, then how would the monetary policy respond uh, to these, the, uh, these variables? So uh, what are the variables? Expected inflation, output gap, and the inertia in interest rates. This alpha one would represent the interest rate smoothing behavior of the central bank. Alpha two would assume that the how the monetary policy will respond to any changes that are taking place in the uh, expected inflation or, or future of inflation. And then this alpha three represents that how the output gap is being uh, uh, being responded by the central bank. Similarly, in the middle threshold, where in expected inflation is below the upper threshold and greater than the a lower threshold in this uh, in this period in this uh, particular regime 
we see that uh, again we have uh, this, uh, uh, we have this interested smoothing parameter beta one beta two is the response to the expected inflation and beta three is the output gap the difference between both is that we are going to take this particular phenomena this particular happening this particular case for the uh, this uh, 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 this middle regime or the middle period then comes the uh, inflation when the inflation is uh, below the uh, lower threshold level so when the inflation is below the threshold level we see we can see the, again what would be the we are interested basically in that what would be the uh, value of gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 and gamma 4 so these are the uh, three regimes which are which are taking place and we are as a monetary authority or as a monetary policy maker, we are switching between the three regimes. The regime one, where it is uh, above the thre uh, uh, upper threshold. Regime two, it is between the upper and lower threshold. And regime three, where, where it is the uh, below than the, the lower threshold. So model two is the restricted model. Now we have restricted model in which we are not going to respond. We are. Uh, we as a policymaker are not going to respond to anything in between the upper and lower threshold level. As you can see in the uh, central, uh, the central equation, where beta naught plus beta one and everything else is restricted. Off. We have restricted L, uh, beta two, beta three, and beta four, etc., equal to zero. And when we are restricted those equal to zero, we are assuming that in the middle regime. Our assumption is that central bank is only going to smooth the interest rate. So it is going to only, uh, or we can say that there, there exists an interest rate inertia. Whereas in the upper threshold model, we again have alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and alpha 4. We, uh, and in this particular situation, uh, we are interested in uh, looking at whether alpha one in this model two is different from the alpha one uh, which was used in the model one, et cetera. So similarly for uh, alpha two, alpha three, and alpha four. Uh, and similar assumptions are, uh, are provided for the uh, third equation in this model uh, when the inflation is below the lower threshold. So um, uh, now we have, uh, instead of having three regimes, and three different uh, um, uh, threshold levels, uh, we are going to have now two regimes. A two regime model is that we are assuming that, say for example, if the inflation is 10% and it is the upper threshold level, so then the monetary policy below 10% would be different than the monetary policy reaction function above the 10%. So in this model, we have we are assuming that there are only two periods, and in these uh, two periods, upper threshold is uh, basically strong candidate for a gym break in this period. That for this period, the the alpha value of alpha two would be much more stronger than the uh, the period for the uh, gamma two uh, or uh, period for the the low uh, inflation below than the upper threshold. So the value of alpha 2 is expected to be more than the value of uh, uh, alpha uh, gamma 2. So similarly, we, uh, we are going to have a fourth model. And this is the linear uh, inflation and output model or the linear reaction function of the monetary policy where we have we have not incorporated any, any type of uh, threshold levels or any type of uh, uh, any uh, uh, nonlinear uh, or the asymmetric behavior of the central bank. So central bank is responding to its uh, uh, own uh, inertia, and interest rate responding to inertia and uh, or the autoregressive behavior, interest rate responding to the uh, expected inflation, output gap as usual, and the uh, lag value of the output. So in a simple trailer rule, uh, we uh, uh, assign these weights to the inflation and uh, the output gap. Uh, sometimes it is 0.5 and 0.5, et cetera, et cetera. So we, uh, we assign different uh, weights to the different models in uh, a standard Taylor type rule. So now the procedures, uh, we have uh, basically 
two to three procedures uh, which are uh, dealt uh, or which are dealing with this uh, particular model. We need to estimate a log likelihood ratio. So this log likelihood ratio uh, would be basically uh, explaining us that how the uh, robust our model is or how the robust our assumptions are. Uh, the likelihood ratio test uh, includes that the, uh, we have t number of observations and residual sum of square of the restricted model minus residual sum of square of the uh, unrestricted model. And this would become a chi-square type of uh, test, which uh, we would uh, study for, the, uh, for these four models which have already uh, discussed. In this uh, uh, log, like, uh, uh, log likelihood rate, uh, ratio test, uh, or the likelihood ratio test, we have the null hypothesis the restricted model is accepted for higher than standard probability of estimated LRT, right? So if we have a higher value of uh, uh, LRT, uh, uh, probability of the uh, this uh, LRT, so we would have uh, our null hypothesis accepted. And the null hypothesis is that the, the restricted model or the model with the restriction is accepted over the model without restriction. So model one is the complete model and model two, three, and four all are the assumed to be or the name to be restricted model in this case. Uh, the procedure we are uh, following is that the data series of experimentation are uh, sorted in the sending order. First, we uh, sort out the uh, data of expected inflation in the sending order and we we minus or we cut down the 10% data from the top and 10% from the bottom, which means that we would lose about 20% of the data out of the out of this whole uh, analysis. And this also ensures that at least 20% data remains within the uh, upper and the lower threshold, 20%, at least 20% remains uh, below the uh, uh, low, uh, lower threshold and 20% remains uh, above the upper threshold. So this is the uh, idea. Just to, uh, just to uh, great search our, uh, um, our performance or the, our model within the upper and uh, lower threshold. So the, this step provides the value of the threshold that minimizes the residual sum of square based on the estimated parameters, alpha i's, beta i's, and the gamma i's. Then for optimal threshold, the likelihood ratio the statistics is then calculated. So given the LRT uh, uh, for a given value of tau, tau is the threshold level, we simulate the p-value for identifying marginal significance level. The null hypothesis in the a restricted model is rejected for a low p-value. So if the p-value is lower, then the, we would reject the null hypothesis that uh, whether asymmetry exists or not, whether uh, the uh, restricted model is preferred over the unrestricted model. Similarly, uh, we would do uh, following Taylor and uh, Deborah uh, Dockies that the estimate restricted model with the full sample uh, then vector ti of the residual is drawn, adding this vector to the vector of fitted value of the interest rates uh, saved in step one. Uh, uh, in this step, uh, we obtain this uh, simulated vector of the interest rates, then estimate the restricted and unrestricted model one to four with the help of simulated series of interest rate to calculate the test statistic uh, tau. So this was the whole procedure which uh, used, uh, uh, which is used. And for this test, the percentage of occurrence that the simulated value of likelihood test surpassed the estimated value of LRT is the empirical marginal significance level of the statistics. And it would help us that whether some uh, threshold level or some uh, level is accepted or not. Uh, this is the uh, table one in the paper. Obviously, uh, we are presenting in, uh, in the PowerPoint, so it is also still it is table one. This is the estimated parameters of the, all three uh, variable, uh, three uh, four models which we have discussed earlier. Uh, these are the alphas of all the four models. These are the betas, and these are the gammas. So alphas are uh, the uh, values of the coefficients when the model is above the above the 
uh, above the upper threshold level. So when the values are the above the upper threshold level, and above the, uh, to this model uh, or this, we can find that the alpha one, which is the coefficient of uh, interested inertia or the uh, trusted smoothing parameter. So this interested smoothing parameter is roughly stable in all the first three models. This is uh, this can be seen that this is 0 0.4, 0 0.39, which is also uh, uh, somehow 0 0.4, and this is also the same. So it is stable. So one thing is established from this first parameter that in every situation, the central bank has an interest rate smoothing behavior and it is not leaning against the wind. So second is uh, the alpha two. This alpha two is basically representing the uh, response to the expected inflation. And we are seeing that this response to expected inflation is also a equal in all the three cases, whether it is the model one or the restricted model two or restricted model three, but it is uh, relatively different, a uh, little bit different in the model four, which is the, which is the linear model. Alpha three is the response to the output gap, and this uh, response to the output gap when the inflation is above threshold level, above the upper threshold level, or it is above the upper threshold, the output gap is responding insignificantly. So, the monetary policy maker is not responding at all, uh, or rather, it is not bothering the output gap or the output uh, differential from its the uh, uh, its potential level we can see that this is highly insignificant uh, the even the t statistic of this uh, is less than 1 which uh, sh uh, shows the redundancy of this variable in this particular situation so in the by looking at the results of this model 1 model 2 and even model 3 we can see that there are little chances that we accept the hypothesis that the Taylor rule or the non-linear monetary policy rule exists because now we look at the um, uh, middle uh, regime. The middle regime is that it is above the uh, uh, lower threshold and lower than the upper threshold. And in this middle regime, we can observe uh, the behavior of the central bank is that it is uh, still waiting, it is still weighing more to the interest rate smoothing behavior, a little uh, smaller behavior, or uh, or uh, we can say it is not going uh, bothering much about the expected inflation, but it is waiting to the, or it is giving much weight now, or significant weight to the output gap and outputs, uh, previous value of output. So when the, uh, we are now established that the, when the inflation is lower than the upper threshold level, the central bank's response to the uh, inflation is a little bit lower than the uh, its response to the output. Now it's going to weight the output as well. So because it provides its, uh, the central bank a space to respond to other factors other than the inflation, when the inflation is lower than the upper threshold level. Uh, similarly, uh, the, uh, we can see the uh, uh, when the uh, inflation is below, even below uh, the, the lower threshold level, we can see the central bank is just going to do the interest rate smoothing, and it is not going to respond significantly to inflation and output gap. Both, it is not uh, responding significantly. All these three parameters, uh, gamma two, gamma three, and gamma four, are insignificant. So we cannot conclude that. Uh, central bank is responding to uh, it, it significantly. So uh, similarly, the, in the model two, as I, I, I have already discussed, that in the middle regime, if we have established that it was the it was restricted, the coefficients uh, of uh, uh, value of the beta two, beta three, and beta four were assumed to be zero, and in this case, the response of central bank to its uh, uh, previous value, the previous value of uh, interest rate that is much higher than the original one. Uh, but in the in a situation when the third regime we are assuming and in this third regime the central bank is only uh, responding to the uh, again it is uh, doing interest rate smoothing and almost equal to the uh, model with the three regime model but uh, sorry uh, but it is uh, not responding to the output gap inflation or the 
uh, output uh, is previous value of the output uh, value. Uh, then uh, we come up with the model three, and this model three is this model three is that we have assumed away uh, or the we have assumed the model into or broken the model into the two regimes. Regime one is when the inflation is above the upper threshold level, or we can say the, when there are episodes of high inflation in the economy. So when there are episodes of high inflation in the economy, the central bank responds to the inflation very strongly, very strictly, and there would be an increase in the uh, interest rate seen as a result of a percentage change in the inflation or in the expected inflation. However, there is again no response to uh, out, uh, output gap and the output gaps inertia. Whereas we can uh, observe that in the period or in the regime when inflation is lower than the upper threshold level, central bank is responding to output gap significantly and it's also responding to uh, inflation uh, significant at 10% level of significance, whereas it is uh, uh, interest rate smoothing behavior is completely uh, outweighing everything else. It is happening, it is there, it is existing in every circumstances. So in model four, the linear model, we have all the four uh, parameters, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and alpha four statistically significant, but their weights are very uh, low, not equal to the what uh, Taylor 1993 uh, assumed uh, or what uh, uh, Taylor has described or what Swenson has, uh, has described. So it is not uh, uh, even equal to those uh, those weights. The interest rate smoothing parameter is still strong in this case. So in all these uh, 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 findings, we are conclusive that nonlinear behavior of the central bankers and vindicate that as the equilibrium real rate of interest rate and uh, real interest rate tends to vary over the regime, it is rather more difficult to measure accurate level of long run equilibrium interest rate using a simple linear model. So uh, we cannot, uh, uh, so a simple linear Taylor rule type model cannot help us when the central bank is behaving uh, asymmetrically in the all the three or the four threshold levels. Uh, the insignificant value of gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 indicate that the below then the lower threshold level, uh, the lower level of the equilibrium, uh, real equilibrium rate of interest, uh, there is um, in the middle regime central banks puts more weight on the interest rate smoothing and the output gap. So these are the uh, generalized results which we have uh, already discussed. So now we, uh, we uh, basically do the bootstrapping of the model. So after bootstrapping of the model, we find this log likelihood, uh, likelihood ratio. Okay. And we find, we uh, uh, let's keep in mind that the uh, null hypothesis was that the restricted model is, uh, cannot be rejected over the unrestricted model or in the presence of unrestricted model, the uh, which was model one, we cannot, reject the model two, model three, or model four. So in the, all these cases, we can find that, uh, first of all, we have uh, used the uh, likelihood ratio test for model one, between model one and model two. And we find that we cannot reject model two in the presence of model one, although model one is still better performing than the model two, but we cannot reject the uh, model two as well. So. So model one and model two, both are the nonlinear models. Similarly, we can find that we can, uh, cannot reject because the probability of uh, occurrence is uh, more than 0.5% or if we go at the 10% le level of significance, even then it is greater than it, it is 28%. So the probability of uh, rejection of null hypothesis is 28%, which means that we uh, cannot reject the null hypothesis. So uh, we have the first result that model one and model two both will hold. Similarly, uh, there is 33% probability that the model three cannot be rejected in the presence of model one. So again, the uh, this hypothesis holds. So now we can we fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case as well. While the model four, model four, which was the linear model, 
all model one, model two, and model three, even though the model two and three were the restricted models, but model uh, one, two, and three were the nonlinear models, and we could not reject model two and model three in, even in the presence of model one, but we can reject the model four in the presence of model one because this probability value value is lesser than uh, uh, 0 0.5 or if we go uh, further, it is lesser than 0 0.2. So if we fail to accept null hypothesis in this case. And as a result, we say that the model one holds, model two holds, model three holds, but model four cannot hold. The, the second uh, uh, next uh, next column represents us with the symmetry, whether the model is symmetric model or asymmetric model is accepted. So in this case, the in this test, the symmetry test, we had the uh, null hypothesis was the, the, the uh, models or the behavior central bank's behavior is symmetric and uh, we could not accept this uh, this hypothesis due to the this probability so the acceptance of this probability is just 0.05 percent so we reject uh, reject null hypothesis in this case and model are asymmetric similarly the inflation uh, this is the uh, this is uh, we have uh, given a very uh, good ex uh, explanation of this that in the uh, in this case in this case, uh, what we call is uh, the test inflation forecast version of the Diller model and uh, rule by restricting number two under the null hypothesis that the central bank does not respond to output and interest rate smoothing when inflation is outside the threshold band. So in this case, we have used the uh, output uh, uh, outside the band model and we found that uh, the uh, null hypothesis of interest rate smoothing, uh, or, sorry, the, the uh, inflation, uh, that the interest rate smoothing when inflation is outside the threshold band, the void answer rejects the dual hypothesis of no smoothing of interest rate and absence of output growth target by the monetary authorities. So uh, I'm sorry uh, for this uh, little blur, uh, but I, I, I am going to emphasize is that uh, we had uh, the null hypothesis that there is no interest rate smoothing, number one, and the uh, there is an absence of output growth target by the monetary authority, and when the inflation out outside the middle regime, so both hypotheses are rejected due to this lower probability of uh, this inflation parameter. So uh, having the having this uh, all background, we now uh, for sake of our uh, viewers interest or uh, overall interest uh, that how the interest rate can uh, can be uh, simulated in the presence of model one and model two uh, in model one we can see uh, the behavior is basically uh, three uh, three regimes uh, switching model uh, three regime model and model two is uh, uh, Obviously, the where we have restricted the central regime, so we can see that the in the three regime model, uh, with the very high uh, pro, uh, interest rates, we can see that the response of monetary authority is very high as well. If I could uh, draw some uh, circle on it, we can see that this is the response of interest rate, uh, 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 response of interest rate to the high episodes of inflation. It is about 24%. Uh, this is the simulated value. This is simulated value. Uh, just and, and in the model two, we have seen it is a little lower uh, than this. It's about 23 point something, and this is 24 point something. Uh, to the lower uh, threshold uh, uh, thresholds uh, type, you can see that the interest rate is uh, as lower as uh, it is about three to four percent. Uh, particularly. In, it was in 2001 and two, uh, in the sixth to seventh month of the. But we can see that uh, there are some economic turmoils, which uh, uh, economic happenings that occurred in the country, and they, uh, to which the response of monetary policy response is much stronger. And this was, uh, this is uh, seen in the in those episodes when after 9/11 incident, the. Uh, 
so many capital inflow uh, took place due to the expatriate Pakistanis which uh, shifted their money to Pakistan and which resulted into high inflation in the uh, uh, stock markets and property markets uh, and uh, so many f uh, other financial markets. And in this period, uh, the inflation uh, blown up and as a result, monetary authorities had to respond uh, strictly and this response is uh, seen in this case. So uh, similarly, model one versus, versus model three, we see that model three is much smoother than the uh, model one. So in model one, we can see that the interest rate is still uh, very high, but in, in this case, uh, the highest value of the uh, model three interest rate is, or simulated interest rate is uh, 21, uh, lower than the uh, model two. And similarly, this is the model four, which is uh, which uh, assumes that it is what is the simulated rate of interest of model one. And this is the nonlinear interest rate. And in the nonlinear interest rate, we have seen that it is approaching to zero in some uh, some uh, uh, periods of time when it was uh, uh, 2012 to 20, uh, 2013 or 14, but it is not approaching to. Uh, 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 but in case of uh, model one, we see that it is not happening in this case. Uh, expected inflation, uh, interest rate under mo model one and the expected inflation, we see that when the model, uh, we are using a nonlinear model, the, uh, the interest rate, uh, when the inflation was this much high and response is this, this much of the interest rate, uh, as a result, the interest rates, uh, as the, uh, the inflation has gone down. So similarly, again, when in, in interest rate, uh, the inflation is this much high, the response is again strict by the central bank. And as a result, inflation has gone down to this level. So there is a, a very interesting, uh, 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 interesting argument we can also build up that the monetary authority is responding Lag in lag to the inflation. Inflation is hap uh, uh, happening earlier, uh, apparently, uh, and the monetary response to it is uh, a little bit later than the, its actual value. So uh, we can uh, see so many ups and downs in this case as well. Uh, under model two, we can see the expected inflation, uh, the value of expected inflation is the same. And this is the model three versus expected inflation, and this is model four versus expected inflation. So, uh, in this case, when we have seen the uh, more smoothing or more uh, interesting behavior, is that the smoothing behavior obviously is result of the uh, nonlinear uh, model, whereas uh, the smoothing uh, that took place. However, in model uh, other models, model two, one, two, and three, which were the regime switching models, we can see that there are so many fluctuations that took place in the interest rate due to a strict response to inflation in uh, high episodes. And, uh, and this can be seen that, for example, it is more than 10%. And we can see that the response of monetary policy is very strict in this regard. And when the inflation is below this, the response is a little bit flexible in this case. Okay. Uh, uh, in conclusions, I would say that how the potential asymmetries in the monetary models with empirical evidence of from Pakistan, we find that the central banking in Pakistan has explicitly shown a nonlinear conduct but the simulation suggests that the non-unity brings higher than the normal interest rate, as we have seen in the graphs. This study further concludes that the central bank in Pakistan is mainly concerned about inflation. It does not respond to output. Interest rate smoothing targets until uh, inflation is lower than the upper band. So it implies that the in the course of uncertainty regarding output gap, Vigilant policymakers should aim at a higher average interest rate. As a historical aspect, in Pakistan, interest rate based on policy has been much more sensitive to macroeconomic conditions in the period after 20, 
2001. The central bank uh, uh, bank's preferences have been asymmetric. Under such preferences, the policy responds not only to current or lagged inflation, but to future expected inflation additionally. So monetary policy response is not only to the current or the uh, lagged inflation or uh, anything like this. It also responds to the future inflation as well. So Svensson type uh, hypothesis can be vindicated here as well. So these also imply that the objective function of the authorities should also contain a way to put the stabilization Right. So uh, with this, uh, uh, so, uh, so monetary authority should also put weights on the output stabilization. So with this discussion, I would uh, uh, end my this whole uh, presentation. And thank you very much for listening and responding to my paper. Uh, I hope that this paper or this uh, presentation would be available. Uh, uh, to you uh, through the any media, uh, wh uh, whatever the media the organizers will do. I thank the organizers for uh, this particular uh, uh, invitation to me and providing me opportunity to discuss my recent research on this non-linear behavior of the central banking. And even though, as we have already uh, established or in, in the beginning of the presentation, we have established this hypothesis that the response to different scenarios of uh, inflation or different scenarios of output, the central bank's response should be different. And it is different as we have seen in case of Pakistan. So I thank you very much for uh, all this. Goodbye.